being here has been so inspiring for me as an athlete and at this Olympics there's over 160 out athletes which is really incredible it's just so wonderful to see the representation and in Pyeongchang I was one of two openly gay athletes on Team USA and we were the first two openly gay men to compete in the Winter Olympics so it just feels so surreal to four years later have so much more representation and it's really it's really wonderful and it's inspiring and I'm gearing up right now for Beijing in February it's like so soon um, it's, it's actually crazy how soon it is, but uh, this, this has been really motivating for me, so I feel like this put me in a good headspace going into it. This is my first Summer Olympics, and it's been a completely surreal experience. It's so different from being at the Winter Olympics and competing to be on the other side of things. It feels very special, like I feel truly blessed and honored to get to experience the games like this. But there's also a little bit, it's a little bit sad um, because the, the families of athletes don't get to be here to watch them and those athletes don't get the same support from their friends and family that they probably would otherwise. Um, or, or at least they don't get to feel it in the same way, but that's why it's amazing uh, to have brands that can be here like Procter & Gamble that partner with the athletes and, and help give them support on the ground. I'm competing for Great Britain in my third and final Olympics. They say you're only as good as your last performance, and so sometimes it's hard to walk away if, it, if you didn't have the performance that you think you did. And obviously that saying is not true, and uh, every athlete's career is a series of highs and lows, and they're not summed up to one moment. But I was contemplating being done competing in 2018, and I think had I medaled, and I was sort of favorited to, and, and I thought I was going to, and I just didn't have the performance I wanted. I was dealing with an injury and I fell. But I think had I won gold, I, I probably wouldn't have been trying to go for a third Olympics. But because I didn't have that performance, it like fueled something in me and I was like, okay, now I've got more in the tank. Um, so I'm, I'm giving it my all, but it, it's nice because this time I know that like this really is my swan song and I am not old for the world. I'm young for the world. I'm really old for my sport. So um, I, I'm excited to kind of give it one more and do the best I can. And, it would be incredible to medal, but I'm just looking forward to having a good performance and then getting to walk away with my head held high. And for me in 2014, I feel like I had pretty much no expectation on me. I, I wasn't a medal favorite. I was pretty young and like had some podiums at events, but I don't think anyone was like, oh, Gus is going to get a medal at the Olympics. And I did. Um, and I think that part of it was that I didn't have the extra expectation on me. There wasn't extra weight on my shoulders. And in 2018, I had had the medal in 2014. I had had a bunch of really successful seasons between the two games. I came out publicly. My profile had definitely grown and I feel like there was a lot more eyeballs on me and, um, and it was it was honestly hard to deal with. Like uh, I felt very grateful for the support from my audience and from sponsors and like in no way was any of the pressure bad but it's it's just a lot it's a lot of pressure for athletes to deal with and it was hard for me and I think that this time around in my third games I, I feel like I have kind of the wisdom and the experience and the know-how and I feel like I can look at it in a different way and it's it's been nice to have the perspective. I mean I love skiing so much I, and I still do it's certainly changed and evolved a lot from when I was a kid and was just doing it with friends and doing it on the mountain and then going home and like building a jump in the backyard and like all I was thinking about was skiing and I was like consuming ski movies and YouTube and magazines and like I just couldn't it's all I could think about and I think that when you grow up you, you start to realize that all those things are true and you can love your sport but there's also like so much else to life and skiing's just not the most important thing to me anymore so I, I love it and it has given me this incredible life and it's introduced me to some of my best friends and I've gotten to see the world and I've gotten to go to the Olympics and so I, I'm forever grateful to skiing and I will forever be a skier. Um, but there are, there are just other things that I'm more interested in and putting time into.